Daily Devotional with the Pastor José Manuel Sierra. My dear brethren, good morning. The letter of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesians that was written from the prison in Rome is going to be uh, the during this week the epistle that we're going to be using to share the word of the Lord with all of you. I remind you very few details that are very very important to have uh, in mind. The Apostle Paul started the work in Ephesus with a group of 12 believers, 12 brethren, that when they, the Apostle Paul asked the following questions, when did you receive the Holy Spirit? They said, I have never heard of the Holy Spirit. They were people that were converted and baptized and discipled by John the Baptist 20 years before. And Paul felt in his heart to start again, to work with these people, to teach them more clearly the word of the Lord. And he baptized them again. And with this group of 12 people, he initiates a work that grew exponentially. In the city of Ephesus, the Apostle Paul was there for the longest time, and probably from that main church, that base, uh, workers came out to establish other churches in the nearby areas. The Apostle John was there with uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and there was also Timothy, Tychicus, Priscilla, Aquila, and they were very recognized ministry and people that were very useful in the work of the Lord. And that's why the church in Ephesus grew up so much. And it was a great uh, church. And Paul is writing the letter to them. And once again, we're reading in chapter 3, as of verse 8 on, the word of the Lord says the following. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which is from the beginning of the ages and have been rehidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Jesus our Lord. The Apostle Paul was very clear in the things that he had to do and the kind of ministry that he had received. He knew perfectly well that the Lord had chosen him as the apostle to the Gentiles to take the gospel to the countries and other cultures, to people that were not raised in the law of Moses. And he knew perfectly well in his heart that that was the calling that the Lord specifically gave him. But apart from all that, he knew that he also knew that he had to clear, clarify certain things of the word of God that maybe people did not understand and they needed a clarification on his part. So that's why he had to go to the Gentiles. He had to clarify to other people uh, concepts and ideas and biblical passages of the Old Testament that maybe they didn't know or they didn't understand that had been fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ and also to announce the gospel to people that were non-believers, people that had not had an encounter with Jesus Christ. The questions that we should ask ourselves right now, each one of us, even the ones that uh, preach full-time or any other believer with whatever church you go to, is are we fulfilling with the will of God in our lives? Do we have clear in our lives to what we're being called? How many times I have said that it would be very good that every once in a while we ask ourselves, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I dedicating myself to this? Is this the will of God? that I invest my time and my resources and my energy, that I involve other people in what I'm doing. If it is the will of God, then glory to God, go ahead. But if it is not the will of God, then why are you doing this? Why are you preaching what you're preaching? 
Why are you sharing? Why are you teaching others what you're doing right now and sharing with people? Do you do it because they, you have been forced to do it or because in the depth of your heart, you are completely convinced that that's what the Lord called you to? It is very important. And, and at this point in time, more than ever, to know if we're doing the will of God in our lives. If we are doing our own will, doing our, my own desires and my ambitions, my agen personal agenda, or am I being in the center of God's will, doing and dedicating myself to what the Lord has called me to do and, and enabled me to do? The Apostle Paul knew that the church and every one of us have a purpose in life. We're not in this life for just by casualty. We don't have to be wasting time in things that do not edify and are not from God. The Apostle Paul knew perfectly well that the church has a message to give to the world. And that message is going to impact the spiritual world. And that's why he mentions principalities and powers of darkness, because the church cannot just be unnoticed. Even in this time, the church has a message to transmit. The me it has a message to share to the nations. Today, that there's so much insecurity and so much uh, fear and so many people that have lost their faith practically in everybody and in everything, like never before, it is essential that we get courageous and with the help of our God, with his presence in our, in our lives, we preach the word in time and out of season. Because it is, it is unbelievable that it's been preaching a lot, but maybe the word hasn't been preached at all. Let's go back to the fountain, to the word. Let's go back to the prophecies that are about to be fulfilled, that are not being preached or taught or shared anywhere. And time has come that the church is open their mouth and we start sharing everything that today, if the prophets will be here, if the disciples of uh, hundreds of years ago, we, they'll be sharing with us and they will be teaching it. It's not time to be quiet, it's time to speak. When you have the opportunity, tell a coworker or somebody that comes to buy something from you or some coworker or family or neighbor, open your mouth and tell them what the Bible says regarding the final, the end times. And ask the Lord also for wisdom so that you can help other people to clarify the ideas that are distorted that they have in reference to things of the Bible. How many Christians are doing things believing that what they're doing, they're pleasing God, and they're very wrong because they're not doing things that are biblical. They're just fulfilling men, com commandments of men to be seen well in, in front of their denominations and their leaders. But in the depth of their heart, they don't, they're not fulfilling their calling. God has called us to be courageous. God has called us to put the, the, the hand in the work and not to waste time, not a minute anymore, to take advantage of the time because days are evil, the scripture says. So I encourage you so that we will ask the Lord that he will help us to discover what is the calling and the purpose and his will for our lives. And that in the next weeks, months, and years, we will dedicate ourselves entirely to serving our God in whatever he wants us to do and to discard and to leave away everything that is not of God, everything that has nothing to do with the purpose, with the divine purpose for our lives. God is counting with you. He wants to use you. Be courageous and do not be afraid to men and obey what God has put in your heart. Even as long as you know 100% that what you're going to be doing is part of the will of God in your lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you because you have are allowing us to see things that have been in your word for years and, and centuries. And we are seeing this fulfillment of these prophecies. And we see how your second coming is at hand. And we're seeing wonderful things for the people that serve you and study your word. Strengthen your beloved church. Take care of us in everywhere where we are. And keep our brothers and sisters that are going through difficult times and help us to preach your word, not to be afraid of anyone or anything, and to announce th those virtues of that one that call us from your, to your wonderful light. We put our lives to your use 
Lord, if it is your will, use us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All my dear brethren, may the Lord bless you very, very richly. Thank you to all who are praying for us, to those who are supporting our ministry so that we can continue preaching the word. And I announce you that uh, the registrations are open for our next trips to uh, Israel in October and November. Just get in touch with us with our email. May the Lord bless you and we will continue with enthusiasm and with all the love that he has put in our hearts, winning souls for the glory and the honor of our Lord. Blessings, my dear brother.